If you ride, the next five minutes could save your life. You're probably thinking, that's a bold statement. <laughs> we know. You're probably also thinking, yeah, but I'm already a good rider. Let's be honest, that's what these people thought too. But with just a few extra riding skills, you can avoid becoming a statistic too. But who are we to tell you? Why should you listen to us? Well, this is PC Andy Griffiths, and it's safe to say he knows a few things about riding. And do you know what Andy really wants to help us with? Corners. Yeah, corners. That's because around 9% of all road deaths and serious injuries happen on them. Road deaths and serious injuries that could be easily avoided. So, Andy is kindly going to help us improve our riding. To do that, we need to plan for what we can see, can't see, or reasonably expect to happen. Planning is the best way to stay safe, and the best way to plan is with limit points. So, what is a limit point? Here's the official definition. The limit point is the furthest point to which you have an uninterrupted view of the road surface. What does this mean in reality though, and how does it help? Let's break it down. Here's Andy, riding towards a bend, and this is his current limit point, his furthest uninterrupted view of the road. View is the important part of this, because as we all know, you don't put your bike where your eyes haven't been. This bend is fairly open, so right now the limit point is pretty far away, which means Andy can maintain a good, safe speed as he has more space to stop. On tighter bends, the limit point is closer, meaning he needs to reduce his speed as there's less space to stop. Let's break this down into three easy to remember steps. If the limit point is moving towards you, you need to decelerate or brake. If you're keeping an equal distance to your limit point, you're within the bend and at the correct speed. Keep this up. If the limit point moves away from you, you can accelerate safely. You can't, however, solely rely on limit points. Weather and road conditions also affect how you approach corners, so adjust your speed in conjunction with looking across or beyond bends for hazards and warning signs. Ultimately, it's about making sure you can stop on your own side of the road, within a distance you see to be clear. You should be constantly scanning the road for information, but do you know there's a difference between navigating left and right-hand bends? In the UK, left-hand bends are the most dangerous, as it's difficult to perceive the curve when you're riding in it. So, Andy is going to set us up for success. Let's start with left-hand bends. Positioning is key when approaching a bend. Look where Andy is now. Positioning himself towards the edge of the road limits his view. Moving here, towards the center line is the optimum riding position, giving him an early view of the bend, increasing his limit point. Riding closer to the line, however, brings you closer to oncoming traffic, so you need to maintain awareness. As we've seen, the distance to the limit point dictates your speed, so Andy selects the best gear for this bend. Riding centrally gives you the space to maintain stability and grip by leaning into the corner, whilst the camber increases the effectiveness of your steering. As Andy passes the apex of the bend and the road opens up, his limit point moves away, and he can accelerate smoothly and prepare for his next hazard, which conveniently happens to be a right-hand bend. So, what's so different about right-hand bends? You still need to consider all the factors we've just covered, but you need to adjust your positioning. As before, Andy is in the wrong position here. Moving here, towards the left of his road space, increases his limit point in view. Riding at the edge of the road means you'll need to counteract the camber, which reduces the effect of your steering whilst considering the road condition and oncoming traffic. What if there's more than one bend? You can only class bends as a series if you can see through them, otherwise, you can treat them as separate and ride as we've just demonstrated. As you approach a series of bends, you should always ask yourself, where do I want to be to approach the next bend? 
The key is to position yourself in the best exit point from the first bend to then enter the second, taking into account any hazards, then safely accelerating away. Remember, never sacrifice safety for positioning. So, that's the basics of cornering covered. And if you remember just one thing, it's that the more signage and paint you can see, the greater the hazard. If someone's gone through the trouble of putting out a load of signs or paint, it's for a reason. Be aware. And while you have great flexibility in positioning your bike, remember, you should never sacrifice safety for positioning and never leave anything to chance. For more info on improving your riding, check out the hints and tips provided by BikeSafe. I am Roadsmart and Rosper.